Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar about the Mulkal Data Manager. My name is Miriam Rickley and I'm working here in the United Kingdom for Mulkal. This webinar will explain more about the Data Manager and will be approximately um, 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more than 30 minutes long. So first I'll explain what the Data Manager is and why we have developed the Data Manager. Of course, we'll also tell you where you can find the data manager, both on PCs, laptops and mobile devices. And especially a big part will be on how to use the data manager, actually. There will also be links to the multi-selector, and I will explain how these links work. You don't really have to do anything for that. It's all done automatically by the data manager itself, as well as the links to the documentation on our website. So what is the data manager? It's actually a free digital system to register all your fire stopping penetrations. It is concentrated on the fire stopping penetrations because it's all linked to the multiple solutions that we have on our website in the multi-selector. And this way, it's a lot easier to actually manage your fire stopping um, on site, even before you're starting to do it, but also uh, during the fire stopping and even afterwards for maintenance and inspection as well. So it's also a very good tool for the client as well to uh, inspect the fire stopping so they know where everything is and how everything has been done. We've developed the data manager. Well, first of all, it becomes more and more of a legal requirement and an insurance requirement to have a very good recording of the fire stopping in your, in your building. Um, we're looking at it to make it really clear to have like an online and offline um, application that can be used pretty much anywhere and everywhere and anytime. Um, because it's available anywhere and at any time, it's very easy to share data with third parties, um, either in the form of making them part of the data manager or sending them logbooks during the process or at the end of the process. I will explain all about that in a few minutes as well. And at the end, you can, and even in between, you can have very clear and sustainable reports with all the links. So you've got all the data in one single file to hand without having to have like, uh, certainly no paperwork, but also you don't have additional files that you need to send. It's all one file uh, that you can send to people. And so it will make it very easy to show other people what the status is of the fire stopping at the moment, uh, not only in the progress, but also if it has been approved, et cetera, as well. So um, if you have any questions, I would like you to ask them uh, in the Q&A section that you can find on your screen. And then I will come back to them after the webinar. So thank you. So the content of this webinar will be about like the account. Uh, how to create an account and how to edit these de account details. And this is exactly what you need to do in this order with your um, data manager as well. Then we'll explain more about the projects, how to create a project, um, the floor plans, how you actually work with it online and offline, uh, because there's a modus for that as well. The markers or the pins that are actually like on the locations on your floor plans exactly where you've got your fire stopping penetrations or linear joints that you are um, adding to this data manager. So I will explain quite a lot about the markers because there's a lot of options you can use um, as well. And it makes the system completely like changeable. So it's exactly right for your application and for your use, how you would like to use it. Then you can make a logbook. And again, that's completely adaptable to your signature as a company, uh, even with the colors and adding attachments. And then you can finish a project, like you can change the status of a project, or you can um, uh, select and filter options of parts that you want to search for and have a CVS export as well. So that's pretty much the whole program of the data manager. And I will go step by step through these um, steps actually at the moment. So when you uh, need to create an account, it's quite straightforward, but I will also tell you how to edit your account and company details as well. 
so you can make it more suitable for you as a company. So you can create an account by uh, the website. You go to the data manager, as you can see, and then you click on register. And that is how you can register yourself as a company or as a person for the data manager. Um, there it is. Now, we also have an app for any mobile devices like tablets and phones, which looks like this. But to register, you have to do it on our website itself. But then you can use the data manager on any device. So when you create an account, um, it's the usual for every company, pretty much. You have to have your email address, a first name, last name, your company name, and a city. Um, you can change United Kingdom. And I would like to also mention for people from abroad, we have this available in Dutch, German, and French as well. And so you fill in your details. You say that you're not a robot and continue. It's the same for everybody else. Then you will get in English or in the other languages that you've sent an activation and you will get an email back to activate your account. Apologies, this is in Dutch, but it will say activate your account in English if you decided to do it all in English. Um, then you activate your account by a password and confirm confirmation of the same password and you activate it and that's it. Then you're logged in and you can get to your main screen. So in the top right hand corner, you can see like your main account. So that's me, Miriam Rickley. I'm a super user. I'll explain about that later. And on the left hand side, you've got actually a whole menu of things you can do whilst you are logged in. So first there is like a list of your products. You can see on the left hand side data manager, which is split up in projects. So there's a list of your projects, which will be empty when you just for the first time logged in. Then any list of logbooks you might have created already and settings. Now, the settings are very important because it will um, make sure that you can use the data manager how it suits for yourself, how you would like to use it. The project manager is a different software system that actually creates a project book from all the tested solutions you have saved in the multi-selector. So the multi-selector is, uh, I think most of, the, most of you know already what the multi-selector is, but it's like a digital tool uh, that you don't have to register for, but you can use it on the internet where you say what your applications are, what services are coming through, what's the fire rating, and it will come up with like tested solutions, including details and links to these test reports or ETAs. The next button is the account where you can um, change your account settings, but also you can add users to the account as well. Then we've got a messaging center, um, support, going back to the products on the website, multiple products, going back to the website itself and logging out. It's all pretty self-explanatory. So as I mentioned, settings is very important because this is where you um, adapt the data manager to your needs as a company, what you actually want to put behind all the Firestop penetrations, what information do you need? And as you can see, like all these boxes have got like, um, you can either switch them on or switch them off. And so if you've got them switched on, that means you want all that information attached to your pins or markers to your Firestop penetrations on your floor plans. So I will highlight a few of these. And where you can see modify means that you can actually change a few bits and pieces within this as well. So first I chose the um, chosen solutions, um, which is linked directly linked to the multi-selector. So if you have that switched on, you can have a direct link to the multi-selector with the details that you will uh, need for the fire stopping of the penetrations. Um, construction type, for example, this is one of these things that has a thing with modify on. So we've got already like a few default options, such as floor, wall, and shaft wall, but you can add any type of construction type as well to this. For example, metal deck or something completely different or a timber framed uh, wall or floor, et cetera, et cetera. That's up to you to make it more user-friendly how you would like to use the system. Uh, the next one, the penetration type, um, status of the project. And again, 
that's also modifiable. We've got again default options, so that's the whole project. So it can be open because you're working on it and in progress as well, or it can be finished when you completed a, a project. But we've got also a few colors left for yourself to change it to the status. So you could, you could, for example, have archive a project as well when it's completely finished and you don't need it for a long time. You can, for example, archive it. So that will make searching for a project a lot easier as well in the future. Now, the status of the marker, that's actually the status of the penetration of the fire stopping itself. So that can start at open. And when you've added some information to it to in progress or finished, um, we also have an approved and follow up status. But again, you can have some colors left for you to change uh, any of the statuses to something that you might want, um, like additional work, or it's a remedial, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or it's part of a survey, so you have it like before you're actually starting to install it. Um, these things can be completely changed. Um, now there is one field that uh, gives you like the option to make sure that the installer puts the required information that you want in before they can uh, change it to finished. So in my example, for example, um, I'm requiring an image, the name of the installer and the application date. I don't need the fire resistance, but I do want the aperture size. So you can just choose which of these you want um, to switch on and switch off for your marker. And that will then apply to all the markers in that project. And that um, will give you like, okay, we don't need that information or we do need that information. So that information has to be fi filled in and only then you can change it to finished of the states of the marker itself. If something isn't filled in, you will get like a little red line that that information hasn't been filled in yet. So that was the settings. Now, back to the account so we've created an account we've chosen the password etc and um, in the account itself you can have users as well so when you look at the back of it it says like edit company details which is very important so you can add a company logo which will also be coming back into your uh, logbook at the end so you can add your company logo your company details as well and you can also edit account details. That's just of the users actually um, working for um, working within this project in this program. And you can change the password. Now you probably won't be working on your own, so you can add a new user to the system as well to the account. So as always, the little red mark red marks means like you have to fill these in, like the first name, last name, and a unique email address. But then also you have to give this new user a role. So it could be a super user which, in which you can do everything, but it also could be the client, for example, when you just want to inform them of the progress uh, of a project. So it's important to give this role to the new user. Once you've done that, the user will come into the account as well, and you can keep on working. Now, with a project, because, okay, we've got now our account and we've got the settings and we're all happy with it, but now you want to start a project. So you need to add floor plans, um, and I will explain to you about the markers, what you can do, what's being asked, and how to work offline as well. So when you create a new project, um, in my case, I've got already some projects on here, but I want to create a new project and you click on the blue button at the top. This is only possible on a desktop on the internet. This is not possible on uh, the app that we've got, uh, but all the parts afterwards will be then um, available on the app as well. So you create a new project on your desktop. And when you click on that, um, it literally comes up with like this page of um, what's the project called? What is the, uh, do you want, why is this? There we go. What's the project called? Uh, where is it? You can, if you want to add an image of or a picture of the project itself, 
<clears throat> and the contact name uh, and details as well. And then if you have save, it goes automatically to the next page where you can do the same for the client. So you can fill in the client's details and the contact details. Then you can save it in an address book if you, for example, do a lot of work for the same client all the time. So you don't have to rewrite it all the time. Save again, and then you go to the maintenance um, uh, company. And again, you fill in the details. You can also copy the company data from a file that you might have already in the data manager. Contact details and save. And then you actually have created your project. And it, I just highlighted here in blue, um, Tower 1. It hasn't got any floor plans or sections or users to it, but you can all do that now. But we've created at least a project. So here underneath the actions, the tree dot means the actions, what you can do with this. So you can add a user to the project. So if you've got already some users in your account, you can just um, tick them and then they are dedicated, then they are assigned to that specific project. Of course, you can change or edit the project data, data. You might have got the wrong address or something like that, or some things have changed. So you can always change that. You can copy a complete project as well. And you can also do that afterwards. Um, or you can move it to a category. You can modify the status, as you can see on the left. And you can delete a project as well. Now, if you move it to a category or modify the status, um, especially the category is new, where you can actually give it a uh, category. So you might work a lot for schools or hospitals or residential or new build or refurbishment. This is completely up to yourself. You can give a category. You can add categories. You can delete the categories as well. And we haven't got any default options for it. So it's completely up to you what you want to do and how you want to create it. And that will make searching a lot easier in the future as well. So there we've got our project still. And now when you click on it, it goes to the floor plans. So we want to create a floor plan or a section um, to add to the project. So new section or a new floor plan. I'm going to choose for a new floor plan. And then you give it a name, um, for example, ground floor. And also you can give the marker a name. Otherwise it will just get marker and then one, two, three, four, five, etc. But I, you can say, for example, I want GF for ground floor, marker one, and then it continues counting one, two, three, four, five. So you can change that if you want to. And then you save again. So now I've got a ground floor plan, but I haven't got actually the plan attached to it. So you upload the image or a picture, a PDF file or a picture. And then when you click on that, it will ask you to drag them there or look in your browser on your PC itself. And then you just click on it and you add it to your floor plan. So there you go. So it gives you a little preview of the floor plan you've chosen. And then you can just select this or you cancel it if it's the wrong one. And then it comes up with the next page and you can crop it and change the size of it and either cancel it or confirm it. So we're going to confirm it. So now we've nearly uploaded the image and <laughs> explaining it takes actually a lot longer than actually doing it yourself. So you can save it as a background as it is, or you can open it or you can still even delete it if you realize, oh, that's actually the wrong one. So you can do that all. Saving it as a background will come up then. Again, so now we've got like a background. You can edit the floor plan. You can uh, copy the floor plan. You can export uh, the markers uh, in a CV CSV export to Excel. Um, download the pictures that you've got per floor plan. Or you can also, that's new now, you can download the whole floor plan, including all the markers. And so you will get a PDF of the floor plan with the markers that are on that floor plan at the moment. And this is also new. You can block a floor plan for unauthorized users. So uh, they won't be able, not everybody will be able to look at it or 
um, amend anything in that specific floor plan. And of course, you can delete it as well. Um, so now we've got a floor plan onto the system. We want to add markers or the pins where the locations are of your fire stopping details. And of course, add all the details to all the data to this as well. So when you look at the floor plan, I've already added a few uh, pins or markers to this. Um, you can change the floor plan still. So the markers stay where they are and you can actually move another layout underneath. So that's very useful when you've got, for example, some changes in layout. And that's why we recommend a PDF because it's easier to, to, to uh, swap it around. But then you can add a new marker and the new marker will be a black dot that um, jumps up and down. So you know which one it is. And then um, it will come up um, your list as like a new marker. When you click on this, you can either move it around because it might not be at the right situation. You can edit it, you can duplicate it, or you can give a line to it. And if you have a line, for example, when you've got like a few penetrations in exactly the same place, if you have all these markers at the same place, it becomes very invisible. And so you can have just a line to the location where it is. It just makes it clearer. Now, the status of the marker, as we explained in the beginning, you can change it in the settings on the left-hand side, settings. So you've got these default options. And here also I have chosen for a remedial or damaged work as well. So that can be changed as well. There you go. Now, if you've got a lot of markers and a lot of pins, then it's easier probably to filter them by status. So you can see which one are all uh, open or which ones have been finished. Uh, you can just select a few of the markers. You can also search the markers by marker name as well and filter them by identification or by marker name as well. And here you can see like normally it would be marker six, but because I choose for GF in my marker name, it's GF654321, et cetera. Here I filled up a few more markers. And what we've got new as well is that you can see how many images are attached to each of the markers as well. So that's just a new feature. We are constantly trying to update it and um, making sure that it's towards the wishes of what you like. So any feedback on our systems is always um, very much appreciated. So we can improve them and make them work even better for yourselves. Now the content of the marker, this is where you edit it. Um, you've got like the name. You can still, by the way, change the name of the marker in uh, the edit form of it. And when you've got like the progress, you can change it to approved, follow up, additional work, et cetera, et cetera. You can choose a solution. This is linked directly to the multi-selector. And then you can choose the solution you want to have from the multi-selector. You just click on them and then these solutions will be attached to this marker. You can add up to six pictures to each of the markers. Um, only the first two pictures will be added to the logbook afterwards, but the rest of the pictures will still be in the background. So you can still look at them in the browser as well. Of course, your installer and application date, the fire resistance, the construction type, if it's a wall or a floor, for example, um, aperture size and what type of penetrations do you have got? Do you have any insulation? What is the Molkel product you're going to use? And this is very useful as well to add this um, to the system because that way in the logbook, you will have all the links to the right products that you have used. Any additional remarks you might have, and then you just save it. And again, in the settings, you can actually choose to say like, I only want, uh, let's say the installer, the pictures, and the chosen solution. I don't want any of the others. And so then it won't ask for that. Now, I spoke very briefly about the users right at the start um, of the webinar. And um, if you are a super user, you're actually the main user of the data manager and you've got rights to do pretty much anything. You can create projects, you can delete projects, you can 
create and delete markers, you can finish up, uh, finish a project, etc. All the rights are yours. Whilst if you're a technician or an installer, um, you haven't got all these rights. You've got the rights to change the markers, but you cannot approve a marker yourself, uh, or like which is actually approve the fire stopping of that area or follow up. That is for super users. Now you can add and move markers around. And of course you can also add pictures. So just so to make sure that they are finished. So these user rights, um, we've got them on the website in the guide for the data manager. And at the top, you can see the different types of users. And at the bottom, you see the ticks, what people can do. So the main account can do everything. But for example, somebody who's informed can only view allocated projects. And the list is longer, as you can see here, but you can't read it anymore, what uh, you can do with it. But there's a guide on the website where you can see exactly what the user writes per, per, um, uh, per user. So now we are going to um, the tablet form and the um, mobile phone uh, form because we've got an app as well and it works really easy to work on the data manager from the app. So either on projects or data manager, you get to both of them at the same time. Uh, there's no difference in between. So we've got also a message center, which can be that we send from Molkol you a messenger like enjoy your holidays. Um, Christmas holidays or other holidays, and we can send messages between each other from the penetration uh, as well. So when you go onto the projects, you can see the projects that are coming up and um, you can either just click on the project if you see it coming up straight away, or if you've got a lot of projects, you can filter them and you can uh, filter them or you can show just the projects as in the categories that we've created earlier. So for example, I just want a schools project, I just want refurbishment or new build, whatever category you want to work with. So it just makes easier a lot, uh, searching a lot easier. And you can also have just a search option as well. So when you click on the project you're going to work on, you can see all the floors that are up there already. And um, again, like with the three dots, you can do some actions. So you can view uh, this ground floor straight away. You can also filter and search. If you have, let's say, 50 floors, it might be quite difficult to uh, troll through them all or scroll through them all. But you might want to search for, oh, I want to just go to floor 53. But you can also work in an offline mode, which is especially useful if you haven't got internet connection, but you still want to do your fire stopping and you still want to record it as well. So if you're starting to work in an offline mode, everybody else that wants to access that specific floor plan will get this message. Time for a nice cup of coffee, because somebody else is working on that floor plan and um, offline, because everything will be automatically updated. But if you're offline, we can't do that. And then you might have a conflict. Somebody might have either deleted something whilst you're working on it, and then it's not going to work anymore. So when you're working offline, nobody can access that, only that specific floor plan. So this allows people to keep on working even without internet connection. And only one user can work on one floor plan offline at the same time. And the others one will not have access to this specific floor plan. But when you've got the internet connection again, all users will have access again to the floor plan. Of course, if you're just keeping on working uh, connected to the internet, everything is updated straight away. And so you can, you can see actually literally like in a second maybe difference uh, that everything is updated. So that's a very useful feature for people that are working offline in, for example, basements where you just don't have any internet access. So when you look at um, any of the floor plans, you can see like any of the markers or pins for the penetrations already on, on the floor plan itself. And you've got a marker list at the bottom. And when you click on the plus, yes, you guessed it already, you can add another marker to it. You can see here the markers at the bottom in the marker list. 
and you can click on the marker itself yourself or you can click on the markers in the marker list and that will open up like a menu as well what you can do with it again new is that we've got like the amount of pictures that you've taken with each of the markers are showing up here as well so you can view it or you can do some actions with it again and when you click on the three dots you can either edit it or duplicate it for example if you have like 10 um, 110 millimeter pvc pipes going through the wall they're all the same you might want to just duplicate all the information from one penetration to the next and just move them around to where they are at the right place just to make your life easier of course you can delete um, a penetration as well and you can send a message which will come into that message uh, tick that we saw at the start of the list so when you edit it it actually means that you can add all the information to the marker that you want to so you can change like the marker name uh, you can change, like I had GF12345, now it's just marker 5 because I didn't give it a name on this one. You can add a description and you can give it a status as well. Now, installers cannot approve or follow up, as we mentioned earlier with the user rights, but they can change it from status uh, open, that it is at the moment, to any of the other stages. Um, then you scroll down, actually, and you can add like a linked solution from the uh, multi-selector. You can add the images to it again uh, in installer. That's mainly you because you're already attached to it and what time you have uh, installed it. So it will go through the same things that we went on the desktop as well. So the fire resistance, you can change these all. And where it says shows all options, show all options, you can change it from, let's say, 60 minutes to 120 minutes. And you can add the aperture sizes to it as well. This is only if like in the settings, this is all required. Otherwise you, you've got a lot less to scroll down as well. Um, penetration type. And again, like um, you can add options to this in the settings on the desktop as well. Um, penetration size, um, type, insulation, the product again, you've got here as well and any additional remarks. Now, when you're very happy with it all, you can just click on the tick at the top and that means it's saved and you will get a little confirmation but yeah there it is sorry a little confirmation successfully saved to the marker so then you know you've done it all right and the marker will immediately appear in a different color uh, on anybody working um, uh, on that project at the moment on that floor plan so then we've added all these markers with all the data and information and pictures and you might want to create a logbook either halfway through a project or at the end of a project. So I'll explain how you can create that and how you can um, create a library to add attachments to these logbooks as well. So back to the main menu, you've got like a list of logbooks already and that's there and then you can see here the little blue button with new logbook so once you click on that it goes automatically in the steps that you need to do so this will be like the name of the project that you want to have for your logbook um, you can then choose which is the category so you don't have to trail through all these projects you're doing at the moment but it could be just like oh it's one of the school projects then it will ask you for what is actually the project name? So it can link actually all the right data and all the right information to this project. You can add a watermark if you want to, but it's not needed uh, in some cases. You can change the color to the colors that might be uh, that you might be using in your company. So you might have a red uh, logo or a green logo. So you can change the color of the cover and of the back as well. And you can uh, decide if you want high resolution images or just low resolution images. Um, with the high resolution images, it's easier to look at them on the PDF. Then you click on continue and you automatically go to step two where you can choose the floor plan. So you don't have to have all the floor plans. You can just choose one floor plan or two floor plans. Um, that's up to you. And the same with the markers. You can choose like all the markers, but you can also say like, no, I just want any additional work that we've done on this project. 
new as well is these filters where you can actually like choose, okay, I'm just going to have any walls that we've done with a 60 minute fire resistance or 120 minute fire resistance. And so you can choose what you want to include in this um, logbook. So once we've done step two, we've got step three, and this is where you can add any attachments. So you can create a title page and then choose an attachment. As soon as you choose an attachment, you can go into your library where you can upload documents and um, create folders to create your library. And um, for example, you might want to put a few pages from a fire strategy report in this logbook as well. So you've got really all the information to hand and it's all uh, in one PDF file in the end in a logbook. So, so you, don't, you don't have to have multiple files. It's all there combined in one folder. So when you go to the attachment, it, uh, you've got already the title page. You can see then an attachment that you might have clicked on to add to the logbook and click on continue. And that's actually pretty much it for the logbook. So you don't need to do anything else. Then it, you will get into a queue and the logbook will, the digital logbook will be ready. So as I mentioned, you can change the color of the front page. This is the picture that you've chosen at the start of the project as an image. Uh, the name, this can be your logo. If you um, register and change your company details, you can add your own company logo. So that will come here. The index, you don't need to do anything about. And this is a very, very tiny little logbook. So the index is there. You don't need to do anything about it. Um, the contact information of the project, the client, the application, and the maintenance companies, if you want to. And then you can see like the ground floor plan. So I choose a watermark as concept over it all. And you can see here actually in the legend of the floor plan, um, what the markers mean in uh, on the floor plan itself. And then the next page is like the markers and they will have like um, where they are on the plan. And then there's two pictures here um, in the logbook itself, but it's probably very difficult to see. You can see here, it says view images in browser. So they popping up in a bigger format. And also this will have all the rest of the pictures attached to it as well. So it's not in this PDF, but if you click on that view in browser, you can see the rest of the pictures. Like of, if you have six pictures, you can see them then as well. Also, um, again, I know it will be difficult to read, but anything underlined is a link. And so these are the links of the chosen solutions. And when you click on them, you go actually straight into the multi-selector with, with the tested solution. And that has then also links to the test report. So you've got everything to hand. Now I mentioned earlier, if you put like which products you have used, then you will get like the links to the specific products, for example, Multimastic C. If you click on that, it will go to all the product data we have on Multimastic C. So it could be an ETA, uh, it will be the TDSs, PDSs, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got it all to hand and you don't need to search for any of the relevant information you might have, you might need afterwards. And that is the back cover of the digital logbook. And that brings me to the end of this webinar. I would like to thank you very much for your attention and for your time to be here at this webinar. Um, I hope it has been of use to you. I know it's a lot of information to take in. We do have a really good guide on the website as well that will explain the steps um, a, a little bit more easily maybe, but also please feel free to contact me with any questions you might have. Uh, by email or by phone, um, no problem at all. I'll be very happy to help. Again, thank you very much for your time today. <laughs>